What's up guys, welcome to today's video. For those of you who do not know, my name is Jack. That's my little sidekick cowboy. And today we're going to be going over the five reasons why you should highly consider probably not getting a cattle dog. So let's get into them. Reason number one, probably should be the most obvious, but for some reason it's always overlooked. This dog was bred to bully 1,200 pound cattle. Um, do, do I need to say more? I think people often forget to look at a breed's history when they're choosing a dog and what that dog was originally bred to do. Um, so I think it's very important to go back, look at, hey, this job was, this dog was bred to bite and move stubborn cattle. So if you are not a stubborn person, um, you might want to consider a breed more like a golden retriever. Uh, this dog is, he will push the boundaries, he will push you. You have to be confident and consistent with this breed. So, reason number one, look at what the dog was originally bred to do. Reason number two, this dog was bred to bite. It is called a healer. They were bred to get in there, push cows heels, and freaking nip them on the bottom of their hooves. So they, you know, are probably more prone to bite and nip than many other breeds, which is why people really don't recommend them for, you know, young families, young families with, you know, kids running around because they'll probably try and hurt them and the chances of them nipping them are probably higher than many other breeds. So I personally have been bit multiple times by this guy. Um, and it's taken a lot of training to make sure to reinforce that that is not allowed. But if you don't want to deal with that, if you don't want to deal with that training, then I would suggest not getting a cattle dog. Reason number three, this guy has insane physical exercise requirements. This is not a dog that is going to be okay with a brisk walk around the neighborhood. All right, this guy is like, two to three hours a day of hard exercise. And it's like, you're either throwing the ball hard or you know, you're going for runs, you're going for bike rides. Um, herding is really the best outlet for them, but if you don't have access to that, then you're going to need to find other ways. There's all kinds of dog sports and stuff, but if that's not something you wanna spend two to three hours a day working on and exercising your dog, if you're not already an active person, um, I don't know if I would consider this breed simply because if they don't get that exercise, they are a pain in the butt and they will just sit there and look at you and whine and, and destroy things. And you read about it online that, you know, they need a lot of exercise, but I don't think people really understand that he was bred to, he was bred by Australian cattle ranchers to cover miles and miles and working all day. And so I think uh, a lot of people overlook that and forget that, holy crap, this dog can work all day. So that's reason number three, insane physical exercise requirements. His stamina is through the roof. Reason four, kind of leading off of insane physical requirements, they also have very demanding mental requirements. Um, any herding breed is going to be extremely intelligent and the cattle dog is right up there at the top as far as um, just canine intelligence goes. I think their IQ is like, I don't know. He's too smart for his own good most of the time. And uh, if you don't want to deal with, you know, providing them the right mental stimulation, whether it's in the form of training, uh, tricks, obedience, dog sports, um, herding is, like I said earlier with physical, I mean, that's the best way to tire them out mentally as well. Um, that's what they were designed to do. So, but if you don't want to deal with a dog that is too smart for its own good, I would suggest a bulldog. All right, guys, and last but not least, reason number five, this dog is extremely, extremely protective. And I think that's a common trait throughout the breed. They just have a very protective personality. And if you aren't prepared for that, you know, that's kind of a double-edged sword because I personally do like a protective dog, but some people may not. And when I say protective, that doesn't mean they'll just automatically know who to protect. That means 
that there's going to be more socialization and training involved to know that, hey, this guy's a good guy versus a bad guy. Um, and we've had instances where, like I brought, I brought Cowboy to college with me and so he got over socialized in the great way for a cattle dog. Many cattle dogs don't get that type of socialization. They're probably like on a ranch most of the time and they don't get to see that many people. So they're even more protective, but he got pretty good socialization. He's still very wary of people. He's wary of new dogs. He's, he's confident and he doesn't have any issues with them um, because he's got so much socialization, but the breed is naturally wary of strangers, strange things. Um, so if you don't want to deal with the extra socialization and the fact that this dog could bite someone that comes in your yard, um, and I think he would, we had, quick story, we had a guy come, I think it was like a bug guy or something, like we couldn't handle whatever bug problem we had, so we called someone. And uh, so he was coming, he was walking around the gate, and our gate makes a very distinct sound when you open it. And uh, I remember the, the guy opens the gate, I hear it, Cowboy is out the doggy door through at the gate before the guy even is able to open it all the way. And he's there, just got him freaking pinned on the other side. There's no way that guy was coming through, all hackled up, barking at him, just ready to freaking light him up. So they are very protective. They, uh, it's just an, in their genes and it's something I don't think you're going to train out of them. So if you want a protective dog, that's great. Um, they're really good at that especially for their size like i mean he's 50 pounds but i would not enter the yard with him so if i was a stranger um but but yeah that's that's kind of the the, the five main reasons that i would suggest looking at another breed or not getting cattle dog if you weren't up for those tasks um i think that you know there's a wow <laughs> i think that uh there's a lot of other reasons out there on the internet and stuff. I kind of tried to pick some that weren't super common, um, but those were also, you know, some pretty big ones to consider there. So anyways, guys, if you like this video, we are also going to be posting um, five reasons to get a cattle dog. So you can compare and contrast. I'll post a link somewhere up above. Um, and it is going to be a lot of research on your guys' part to make sure that this is something you want to commit to. They live like 15 years often, so, or more. I think the oldest dog to ever live was a cattle dog at like 21 years old. They are definitely a commitment, um, but I hope that these reasons kind of opened your eyes or gave you a little bit of insight into, you know, what it's like for me to have owned a cattle dog now for a couple years, and hopefully it can help you make the right decision for you and your family. So, if you liked the video, drop a like, comment what more you'd like to see, and uh, we will catch you next time.